I think it is right to put on record, as many have already, uh, to tr pay tribute to those in local communities uh, who have spent many, many hours, often at great, great personal expense, uh, given sacrifice uh, time with their families, <coughs> time that they could have devoted to looking uh, after their own interests, but have devoted time to their own community, uh, to steward parades, to help uh, in a voluntary way to ensure that there was a peaceful outcome. And I think they deserve to be commended throughout communities in Northern Ireland, as indeed to those who go on parade and who, despite severe provocation on many occasions, despite being spat upon, right. having stones fired at them, right. despite verbal abuse and physical violence, have to uh, virtually on 100% of occasions, certainly uh, in recent years, have been absolutely uh, peaceful uh, and dedicated to behaving in an entirely civil, peaceful and democratic way. I have to say I was alarmed at the uh, remarks of the Honourable Member for Foyle when he talked about uh, or sought to redefine what a peaceful parade was when he indicated or uh, sought to portray the situation that you could have a, a, a parade being not peaceful if in fact it was contended or if there was controversy surrounding it as a result of opposition from others. Uh, I totally reject that uh, interpretation and that definition. Uh, the fact of the matter is that those who go on the parades in Northern Ireland do so entirely peacefully and I entirely endorse what the uh, Honourable Member from East Antrim said about the ordinary decency right. uh, of the people that are involved in these loyal orders who come out on parade and who do want to get involved in violence in any shape or form whatsoever. A lot of the debate, Mr Speaker, has centred on the Parades Commission and the strategic review of parading necessarily so. And a, a, a defence has been put up here in this House by the Honourable Member for Foyle and the Honourable Member for South Down uh, of the Parades uh, Commission. I have to say I do not agree with what the Minister said in terms of his praise for the work of the uh, Parades Commission. Uh, I agree with my right honourable friend and other honourable members on the benches here who have uh, said uh, about the problems that the Parades Commission ha have caused and the way that they have gone about their work, not acknowledging the progress that has been made where there has been engagement, setting their face against uh, 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 recognising and rewarding those people who have engaged in, a, in good faith and trying to move things forward and instead rewarded those who have sat on their hands and done nothing right. except refuse to actually try and make progress. Right. Uh, the Honourable Member from the, speaking on behalf of the, uh, Her Majesty's Opposition, uh, the Honourable Member for Tewkesbury talked about the good deal of good work that the Parades Commission had done and uh, that whilst they didn't enjoy complete support, they enjoyed some support. Well, he's right, they do enjoy some support, but very little support, as he will know, I hope and acknowledge, in the unionist community. Uh, and that is why I was more encouraged by the remarks of the Minister when he intervened uh, uh, on one of the speakers uh, during the debate and talked about the need for consensus, uh, because I think that this goes to the heart of it. Here we have a commission which deals with one of the most contentious issues in Northern Ireland and it is roundly lacking in support right across the unionist community. Uh, it, it may be supported, and we have heard tonight from the SDLP benches and others in the nationalist community, but I dare say that if there were an opinion poll and a survey of opinion taken uh, in the unionist community, and it is reflected by the speeches that have been heard tonight in this House, uh, there would be hardly any support whatsoever for the Commission. So it is quite clear that the argument has been won. And despite the uh, sort of uh, last gasp efforts of the SDLP to try to fly the flag for the Parades Commission, the fact is that everybody now recognises that its day is done, that it will have to be replaced, and that indeed it will be uh, replaced in due uh, course. There was a great deal of misunderstanding. I don't know whether it's due to a lack of information or, or, or deliberate or whatever, but uh, certainly the member for South Down and others talked about the role of the councils in the, in the new dispensation under, uh, under Ashdown, which displayed, I think, uh, a lack of knowledge about the way in which the councils are involved in this. 
Uh, and, uh, Mr Speaker, I think it is important that we do recognise that for far too often the Parades Commission has responded to threats, as has been indicated by the Honourable Member for Upper Ban, who knows full well the situation in his constituency right. with one of the most contentious uh, and controversial situations of all, where he pointed to the unwillingness of those who are protesting against the orange men in that area being willing to engage in a constructive way forward. In the couple of minutes that are left to me, I want to make a couple of more general remarks. And that is, we have framed this motion in the context of the possibility of the devolution of police and justice powers to Northern Ireland. And it is important that we reiterate once again that there can be no confidence. And remember, whilst there's been talk of financial uh, packages and so on, which is absolutely vital, and I commend the tremendous work that has been done, particularly by my right honourable friend, uh, the leader of my party, yeah, in achieving yeah. such tremendous progress in terms of a financial package for Northern yeah. Ireland yeah. on the policing yeah. and justice yeah. side yeah. of things, yeah. and also yeah. the contribution that has been made and the work that has been put in yeah. by yeah. the yeah. government on that uh, particular issue. But remember, for us, the overriding issue is confidence in the community. This is one key aspect of ensuring that there is confidence in the community. You cannot have confidence in the community where you have a situation where people are in government sharing power, but they won't share a public road. You can't have confidence in a situation where people are saying they want a shared future, but they won't actually say that you're entitled to share a public Until we get to a situation where there is mutual respect, where there is that recognition that uh, the loyal orders do have the right to parade the public uh, highway in a peaceful and democratic way, then I think it's absolutely pointless to talk about trying to create confidence. We need to ensure that confidence exists. This is a vital component of it. I believe it's essential that we get resolution on these issues. We cannot afford to go into any more years next year or the year after that with this issue unresolved, especially if we're going to see progress on policing and justice.